with a shout and a hand clap to the Lord as you make your way back to your seats. Would you just give a praise to God on your way back to your chair? There's nothing like that name. If y'all don't mind, I'm going to call an audible here. I know y'all got here at 8 o'clock and practiced all morning. You've got another song, but Lord will let us be okay with that, won't he? I feel like preaching right now. So good to see all of you. Thank you for coming to church. God's got all this stuff in control. He's got it. He sees it all, and he's with us. I'm going to preach about it so I can't start preaching just yet. Smokes, we're very glad you're here. Our missionaries to Tanzania, aren't we glad they're here today? <laughs> Revelation 12, 7 through 12. I'm glad to have my mother back home. That lady's something, folks. She's 95. And somebody said, well, I'd like to be. You won't be that way. There's only one like her. Somebody said, well, what? I said, she's just exceptional. I mean, she's an exception. The rule is, by the time we're 95, we're either on a walker or we're barely getting around or in a nursing home or with the Lord. But this lady, for the last three days, spoke in Michigan. I said, Mother, fly home Saturday. She said, no, as soon as church is over, I'm flying to Houston. I got Lenore coming to get me. I want to get home and get to church. That's the covering we have here, and I thank God for it. Mother, we love you. <laughs> Revelation 12, 7 through 12. And if the uh, computers will stay with me up there, I've added a couple of scriptures in my message, not right here. Uh, but... It, it, God just gave it to me while I was in my office. And there was a war in heaven. Did you hear where that war was? And there was a war in heaven. Let's read together. I'm going to read up there with you. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against and the verse 8. Now here's what's good. And prevailed not Neither was their place found. He kicked them out. And the great dragon was cast out. The old serpent called the devil. And Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Now that's a powerful army. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knows he doesn't have very long to work. But God's with us. Delphine, come up here just a minute. God's with us. Everybody say God's with us. How many came here needing a touch from God today? You came here needing a... Today it's going to happen. This is one of the greatest testimonies. I'll let you stay down there. You may be seated just a moment. <clears throat> I may let you just stay down. I just may start preaching out of this. Listen to this testimony. This is your prayers. Thank you, Jesus. In April, uh, I was having trouble with my back, so I went to a back doctor. And he did, ordered some MRIs. And the next day, they called me and said, uh, we need you to go to have a cat scan of your chest, your abdomen, and your pelvis. And I thought, that is not my back. That is not good. So they said as She's soon as, um, that was on Wednesday, and they said, and then 
we have an appointment with you f with Dr. Syriac in the morning. Oh, as soon as you get the CAT scans, come straight to our office. Uh -huh. So I went and had the CAT scans and went straight to his office. And he said, um, your back is just because you have arthritis and you're old and we're not worried about that. He said, but you have a mass in your abdomen. And oh. he said, I have an appointment with you in the morning at Tulane Cancer Center and I'm sending all these reports to them and they'll see you in the morning. So I was like, oh, this is not good. So I went to the cancer center the next morning and they said, yes, you have an a, a, a mass in your abdomen. It's very small, but it's not supposed to be there. It's behind your intestine in front of your spinal cord. We don't know what it is because it's in an unusual place and this is very rare for you to have a, a, a mass there. So they said, we need to do surgery on you. I said, okay, so on May 6th, I went for surgery and they took it out and they said, it's very small and we don't know what it is really, but we think it's, it's not cancer. But on May 21st, I went back to the doctor to get the report and she said, um, well, this is really not good. She said, you have a very rare cancer the pathology report shows that it's a, an endocrine-based tumor, but it, it's not from there, it's a metastasis from somewhere else in your body. She said this means that there's another cancer in your body somewhere, and we have to find where that is, because that's the primary one. The one we took out everything that was in your abdomen, but there's another one somewhere, and we have to find it. And she said this is very rare, but we'll take care of it. So I sent all my records to um, MD Anderson, and after I left the doctor's office that day, I'll be honest, I completely lost it. And I was shattered. And, um, but after we prayed and people began praying for me, and my beloved Lane over there and Sister Tinny, and the song, whose report will you believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. That song came to me. You better believe that. And I sang that song. When I was in a place where I couldn't sing it, I was singing it in my mind. I must have sung that song a hundred times a day, over and over and over in my mind. And when I wake up in the night, and that fear grips you, and that song would come to me, and I'd just say it over and over in my mind. So. They called me from MD Anderson. I was in the parking lot shopping, and the lady said, we need to get you scheduled as soon as possible. You know, this is a very, very rare tumor, very rare cancer. We don't see a lot of them, but here at MD Anderson, that's one of our specialties. We'll find that, that cancer wherever it is in your body. We're going to find it, so don't worry. Once we find it, we'll give you a treatment plan, and we'll tell you what your prognosis is. And she started listing all these things. Are you weak? Can you walk? Are you having trouble breathing? Are you sick at your stomach? And I said, no, 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 no. I'm, I haven't got any symptoms. I'm fine. I don't feel it. I, I don't feel that, nothing. And she said, well, you know, you're going to start having symptoms of something because you have a tumor somewhere, and we've got to find it. I said, ma'am. I believe the report of the Lord, and his report says I am healed. And I said, I bound that cancer, and I have thrown it back into the pits of hell where it came from. <laughs> and for about one second, there was complete silence on that phone. And then that lady said, in Jesus' name, you hold on to that. She said, you just keep believing that, and God is going to take care of you. So I went over to Indy Anderson at uh, the end of June, or the middle of June. I saw the doctor and he said, now this is all I do. Th these are very rare cancers, but this is what I do. I study these cancers, I research these cancers, and I'm gonna find this cancer. So I said, okay. He said, we have a special test, it's a PET scan, but we order, we have special medicine that's made per person because this is so rare. And it's, it's very expensive, but when we give you this medicine and this scan, we'll be able to find where that cancer is. So I said, okay. 
He said, you can, we'll do the test tomorrow. You can go home because of COVID. We don't like to keep people, but you can go home and I'll call you and tell you when you have to come back for your treatment. So I said, okay. So I went the next morning, I had the test, I came home. He called me the next day and he said, I've got good news and I've got bad news. I said, okay, what is it? He said, I can't find the cancer. <laughs> I said, okay, you can't find the cancer? Is that the good news or the bad news? I'm not, I'm not sure. And he said, well, he said, I don't know because you're going to have to come in three months and let me look again because I know there's a cancer there, but I can't find it. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, well, you can't find it because my God is taking care of that cancer. I'll come back in three months, but if it's not there now, it's not going to be there in three months. So don't worry about it. And we give God the praise for that. It doesn't matter what you have in this room this morning. Thank you for that testimony. I believe that. Has anybody in this room ever been healed by the blood? Been healed. I thank God for it. My subject this morning is the dragon and his angels fought, but they prevail not. COVID, you're not going to prevail. Linnell, in Jesus' name, we're going to speak you coming out of it in Jesus' name. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb. That great dragon, that old serpent called the devil. Satan, which deceived Eve, which now deceives the whole world. The angels that were cast out of heaven with him. They're a very powerful army. But I want to tell this church this morning, they cannot penetrate the blood of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says they overcame him by the word, the infallible, unchangeable, our witnessing word that breaks every opposition, that consumes every devil. This incorruptible word that conquers anything that's in front of it. No blade can equal the word of God. It can go into any house, it can go into any arena, it can go into any church, and the word of God will prevail. No wonder hell and that great dragon, the devil, Satan, hates the Bible. He knows that one from the bottomless pit has a great chain in his hand, laid hold on that dragon and bound him a thousand years and cast him in the bottomless pits. God's got everything under control. Today, I'm going to declare the ultimate victory of the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, by the word of the transforming faith in Jesus Christ, in obedience to his only saving gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection. When Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. When you're buried in the name of Jesus, God puts a stamp on you and the blood of Jesus Christ is applied to where we have victory. We who are facing cataclysmic travail of the last days, we must face it head on with the constant statement of the overwhelming power of the blood of the Lamb. With the word of our testimony, loving God, loving others more than ourselves. Now here is our message today. Casting down of Satan results from a great battle between the host of heaven and the host of hell. In this battle, heaven's warriors forces Satan and his demon forever from the heavenly realm. But notice, Victory is not yet achieved solely by the angels, but also by the believer. He said, my angels alone will not do the work, 
but I'm going to have me a man and woman on earth that's going to work with me. And they're going to have my name. And they're going to have my word. And they're going to have my blood. And they're going to have my Holy Ghost. And they're going to have my faith. And the angels fight, but God's saints provide the five power. They overcame him. They overcame him by the blood, by the word, loving God and one another and souls. The angels did not overcome the great dragon, the old serpent called the devil, but the saints who partnered with the angels in prayer and spiritual warfare. They are the ones that overcame the devil. The angels were God's means for ministering the victory, but it was there because prayer had enforced it. Notice the mention of Michael in verse 7. One of the four places where he is mentioned in Scripture, in Daniel 10. Now, we're going to be very familiar with this because for years we have done the Daniel's fast. And when you look at this scripture, Daniel 10, 1 through 4, you will see where that comes from. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel whose name was called Belshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning and travailing three full weeks. I ate, Daniel fast, no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine to my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the fourth and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the river, which is Hidekal, then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, from the very first day, that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the king of Persia. Dragon. He was already been defeated, Colossians says. Jesus has stripped the devil. The devil has already been defeated. He's already been whipped. He's already been triumphed over. He is a relentless, mad devil, struggling to regain claim on the planet that he has lost. The souls that have been snatched out of his clutches. The keys to his own house of death and hell. He doesn't even own anymore. Jesus came down here in Revelation 1 and 18. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Thus, that devil is unleashing every weapon every destruction, every COVID disease, everything from the pits of hell. He is unleashing everything he can on the body of Christ. But those that declare Jesus Christ as Lord will have ultimate victory because we have a name and because we have the blood and because we have the word. I came in here early this morning. I thank God for this music. They got here at 8 o'clock. They were up here practicing at 8 o'clock this morning. But I walked in here and I walked around. I picked my Bible up when I got back to this office. I said, I'm not going to that pulpit today, God. I don't have the most strength in the world, but I'm not going there in Anthony's Magnum strength. I am going there through the authority and the power of the word and the blood and the name. And we're going to walk to that pulpit and take authority over everything in that room that people have been fighting. He may be unleashing on us, but we're going to unleash on him. He may be mad at us, but I'm mad at him. I'm not going to let my faith waver right here in the end time. 
This is going to be the greatest day that you've ever seen. I'm not going to let the devil get you down. Talked to a sweet family yesterday that their family's been hit by COVID. And she's uh, the family. You don't know who they are. They're uh, mid-range, mid-age. And she said, Pastor, I've always been very up. She said, but this COVID hitting our home and us being locked in, she said, there's been an oppression and depression that I've never had that's come against me. I said, well, you watch in the morning because they have COVID. I said, you watch in the morning because by the way of that camera and by those that are watching and by those in this building, ever oppressing spirit, ever depressing spirit, everything that's had us down, we're going to shout it out of this place today. We're going to shout it through those cameras today. And God's going to give us victory. Would you help me shout just a moment? <laughs> His accusing voice of condemnation and guilt. Don't let him condemn you. Don't let him put you on a guilt trip. It's all swallowed up through the triumph of Calvary and through the power of the resurrection. We're going to keep on declaring the accomplishment of the work of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. We're going to constantly participate in Jesus' ultimate victory over him. The power of the cross still works. The resurrection is still real. The Holy Ghost that I was baptized with when I was seven years old still works. The name that I was buried in in water baptism is still working. The ascension is soon to happen and we're going to be with the Lord. So no devil, you may have us down. No devil, you may have us with COVID. No devil, you may have spirits coming against our family. But today, we're gonna shout against you and we're gonna declare through the word. And the blood in the name. I was walking out and Deb called me and said, Pastor, said there's a man that's driven here that would like to just see you and he wants to pray over you and bless you. I said, well, that's unusual. I said, we know who he is. No, we don't know who he is. I said, well, okay. He said he's from Texas. I said, well, okay, I'm, I have to leave. I have an appointment off campus. Tell him to meet me uh, outside by my car. And he came out there and he was weeping. He said, first of all, I want to tell you, it's the first time I've been here and I went in that prayer room. He said, I've never felt anything like that. He said, I'm a man of God, been used of God, but I've never felt what I felt in that prayer room. That's the result of 24 hour prayer that's working in this church. But he said, I've come by here to bless you. And he laid his hands on me and he began to speak over me. Then he started praying over you in POA. He said, it's been a church that God's hand been upon. I pray a blessing over that church and that man of God that drove for two and a half, three hours to get here, got in his car and drove back home. I'm gonna take that blessing he put on me and I'm putting it on this congregation today. And through the authority of the name of Jesus, I speak it over you and over your family in Jesus' name. Originally, Satan was an archangel in heaven. Now, follow me here. There are three such archangels in the word of God. There is Lucifer, there is Michael, and there is Gabriel. There are three archangels that are listed. Each of these three archangels had their own regiment of angels. Lucifer had one third. Michael had one third, and Gabriel has one third. Lucifer decided to rebel against God and try to conquer heaven, and it caused a war in heaven. And God took Lucifer and his angels and expelled them and cast them out of heaven, and from that day to this, they have been doing their work on earth. He cast them out of heaven and they do their work on earth. Satan's headquarters is now on this earth. The Bible calls him the God of this world. The Bible says 
that he is the prince and power of the air. The Bible calls him the gates of hell, right? The gates of hell shall not prevail against you. It's called the gates of hell. There are, however, as far as we know, only three occurrences where Satan actually appears. Number one, his first appearance Satan made on earth was in the Garden of Eden. There he came to man. Watch this. And he accused God to man. He said, God's word is not true. He said, hath God said. So when he shows up the first time, he accuses God to man. Satan has not stopped that kind of evil conduct. He is still casting reflections on God's word. Anytime that you hear a preacher or a saint say this is not the infallible word of God, you turn and start running as hard as you can run. This is the infallible word of God. You can stand on the word of God. So the first time he came, he came accusing God, man to God and the word of God. The second time in the Bible, Satan comes, he is accusing man to God. First, God to man. Now, he comes to Job and he accuses man to God. He starts talking about Job. He says that he's accuser of the brother, the devil. He accused in Eden. So Job reaches a point where he is now seeing the work of man having an attack from the vicious vials of heaven accusing man to God. The third time we find him in the word of God is Matthew chapter four. He came to Jesus when Jesus was in the wilderness. We've got it. He had been there 40 days and 40 nights. And when he comes out, here he comes. And the Lord has to face him. In Genesis, it's God to man. In Job, it's man to God. In Revelation, and Matthew, and Revelation, it is the God man. First, the appearance. When he came the first time, he messed up the best situation in the world. God walked with men and women, uh, with man in the Garden of Eden. And then God gave him. When he gave him Eve and he walked with him in the coolness of day. And then he raised his ugly head and God had to deal with that situation. In the book of Job, he came to the best Christian. He wants your testimony. He wants our life. He wants our time. He wants our talent. So he came at first to God. In Job, he comes to man. In the last days, here he comes. In the last days, here's what you can throw on the screen. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 6. This know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fears, despisers of those that are good, good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. But while that is happening, I want to give you one more last day scripture. And it's Acts chapter 2, verses 17. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your young men shall dream dreams. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit. You're going to be prophesying people. You're going to be speaking people. You're not going to be oppressed by the devil. You're not going to be bound by the spirits of this world. There's going to be an anointing of God that's going to rest on you. That when you open your mouth, there will be an anointing. That will flow. 
In Matthew 5, he comes right after victory. Jesus had prayed and fasted for 40 days. He had blessed time of fellowship he had had with the Father. Satan attacked him. Satan hounds him constantly. 1 Peter 5 and 8. The devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Yet there are times when the devil is worse than others. Revelation 12 and 12 says, having great wrath because he knows he has but a short time to work. Now what you have to understand what pastor is preaching today. <clears throat> Last day demons are going to be attacking fiercely, more fiercely than they have ever attacked because they know that their days are numbered. And one angel is going to bind that devil that's given us all of our problems. One angel is going to bind that devil and going to cast him to a lake of fire. You know where the devil's headed? The devil is headed to hell. And if it wouldn't sound like I was, well, I just told him where to go, didn't I? He's headed to hell. When he reminds you of your past, you remind him of his future. I haven't been perfect. I haven't been the best one. I haven't served God like I'd like to serve God. But let me tell you something. I'm on my way to heaven. And let me tell you something. You're on your way to hell. You and all your devils. You and all your demons that tried to destroy my home that tried to wreck my family. And now God's brought us back together and we've got the greatest family we've ever had. I declare to you, devil, we have victory over you and we will declare it in our home. In a professional fight, when the fighters are getting after it, they know that last round. Now it was back uh, years ago. Daddy wouldn't let us watch TV. I mean, Daddy, Daddy was something. He said, that's an evil thing. We couldn't have a TV. And so I snuck off. And there was a fight going on. I'm, I had a neighbor friend of mine. that was, I loved him to death, and he loved me. And he had a TV. So I, I just told Daddy, Daddy, I'm going to play ball. And so I'd get out and play ball a little bit. Then I went in there. And it was the fight that Cassius Clay, that became Muhammad Ali, but Cassius Clay was fighting Oscar Bonavini. And Oscar Bonavini had beat the stuffings out of him. One of the few times he had ever been beat, beaten. He was done. To this day, I don't know why Oscar Bonavini didn't just run around the ring and just stay out of the way. But with about a minute left in the 15th round of the fight, when the fight would have been over, he'd have been the winner. Cassius Clay let loose with the shuffle and with the bump, 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 bump. And the next thing they know, Oscar Bonavini is out. He wins the fight with like a minute, two minutes left in the last round. He won the fight. The devil knows he's in the 15th round. But there's something else he knows. He's Oscar Bonavini. And he knows that the church knows that we're in the last days. And if he thinks I'm going to lay down, if he thinks I'm going to quit coming to church, if he thinks I'm going to give up on my walk with God, he's got another thought coming. I'm getting ready to fight like I've never fought. I'm getting ready to worship like I've never worshiped. I'm getting ready to praise like I've never praised. The LSU, they just celebrated 20 years. Warren Morris, who's, who's over at Red River Bank, he had had a broken arm. Y'all remember that? Had a broken arm. LSU was behind. What was it, eight to seven or something like that? They was behind, had one man on base. Warren Morris had been out most of the year. They were one run behind. He comes up to bat, left-hander, with that cast, that plastic cast on his arm. He comes up to bat, bottom of the inning, 
LSU behind, Miami two outs, counting their trophy, shining that trophy up, and all of a sudden, bam, Warren Morris hit his first home run of the year. And LSU won the national championship by a guy with a broken arm that in the last inning, boop, today, Mr. Devil, you know you're in the last days, but so do we. And we know it's the greatest hour the church has ever seen. And though COVID has touched our families, though COVID has touched our church, we got the testimonies of the Delphine Welches, of cancers that have been healed, and of lives that have been touched. And devil, I'm telling you, you've just got a short time and you're going to hell. We got a short time and I'm going to heaven. I'm putting up a fight. I wish somebody today would just shout out to me, Satan, you're defeated. Devil, I got the victory over you. Stand to your feet. Devil, I got the victory over you. Devil, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Devil, I'm going to claim my victory. Now, if you feel comfortable, as we did earlier, step out in the aisle. Cam, I want y'all to play music in just a minute, but we're getting ready to make music with our voices and with our hands. If you feel it, just step up here with Pastor just a moment. We're going to cast the devil out of our families. We're going to cast the devil out of our homes. That's it. Come close just a moment. Thank you. Come to the rail up there, balcony. Thank y'all, coach. I love y'all. I'm praying over all y'all up there. Thank you for being faithful to the house of God. Look at this church. That's it. Spread out across here. Get six feet from everybody and spread out. And those that want to put your mask on, put your mask on. I'm waiting for everybody. That's it. They're coming all the way from the back. That's it. Balcony, get up to the rails. Tony, come here just a minute. God, I just looked here and saw him. You talk about Delphine. Come here, Tony. I'm just following after spirit right here. Tell them what happened. Take that off just a minute. I'll walk away from you. Put, put that mic right there and tell them what happened just a couple of weeks ago. Um, I had 100% blockage in my right coronary artery. And next thing I know, I'm in a helicopter flying to Shreveport. And uh, I knew it could go either way, but I had a lot of prayers stored up, <laughs> a lot of prayers. And uh, I just called on them, and I was close. I said, if you want to take me now, I'm, I'm halfway there. Let's go. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> That ain't a bad prayer. We just leave from I right there. You couldn't handle that one. But uh, you know who always prayed for me I know, all uh, We were all praying. That's right. I, I got a hold of them and prayed. They said he couldn't land the helicopter a certain place. We had to go to some place right. had to get the helicopter in to get it. it we were pleading the blood. Amen. But here he stands. Hallelujah. You say, well, the, you say, well, the doctor helped over me. Yeah, he did. You know how the doctor knows how to do that? God taught him how to do that. Whether it's through a doctor or whether it's suddenly, God heals our body. And I thank God for it and I claim it. Yeah, I would like to testify that everything Pastor has said today is true. It has happened to my family. The enemy attacked my daughter. He would beat her. He'd throw her around. And I didn't know Jesus at the time. I'd never been here. <laughs> but when I called out to Jesus and I said, I need you. This can't be your will for my daughter's Isn't life. He came to me in a dream. He told me to leave that church and come here. And since then, we've all received the Holy Ghost. We are warriors. And we know who Go lives ahead. inside of us. Go ahead. He is greater than he who is in Go the ahead. world. Amen. Shout that name. Now, if you're comfortable with somebody, 
you with a shout, your family, if you're not, if you haven't been with them, don't touch them. You lay your hands on that person beside you. You lift your voice and shout victory for them. You claim victory for them in the name of Jesus. That's it, shout in the name of Jesus. Speak in the name of Jesus. Declare in the name of Jesus. We're gonna pray for Scott Hunt. Hold your hand towards the front. Tomorrow he goes for surgery. They, he has a tumor in his brain. I believe that thing can dissolve before they even get in there. Thank you, Balcony. Lift your voices. We speak it in the name of Jesus. Now listen to Pastor. We've heard testimonies. We've heard testimonies. We got testimonies. We got testimonies. I want you just to start saying that name. Jesus. Jesus. When you leave here today, I'm going to ask a favor. Speak to people. Hello, how you doing? I speak Jesus to you. If you don't want to touch nobody, don't touch them because that stuff is raging. Just put your hands behind your back and say, I speak Jesus to you. However you want to do it, speak Jesus. But I want you to leave here believing that God has your circumstance and that God has your situation. Listen, did I name them? We got three legions, right? We got Lucifer. Who else? Michael. That's who we got in Gabriel. All three of them had a third. But I said, well, pastor, he's got a third with him. Yep, but we still got two thirds with us. We got, for every devil he's got, we got two angels with us. You know you got him outnumbered two to one. So get your hands in the air. Get a smile on.